Hello YouTube community. This is the first video as part of a brand new series released on our YouTube channel, uploaded regularly. It is gonna be on the stone wall. This is the stone wall right here, these four pawns, C3, D4, E3, and F4. Of course, you can flip and play it as black as well. F5, E6, D5, and C6 pawns. So that's the exact setup. You'll get used to where the pieces go as you watch the series. I also wanted to give a little PSA uh, for everybody when you're doing the stone wall, if people hit you with E5, I don't really recommend playing E3, F4 and trying to make it work. I mean, just play what you normally play here. Probably D takes E5 rather than trying to force it. And similarly with the black pieces, against E4, it's the toughest to get this stone wall set up. I've been playing the French. If they take, we can still play F5, Knight F6. And as you'll see from the series, still very successful but if people play e5 i wouldn't recommend trying to force it you know just play into a normal french here i will also have a series coming out on our youtube channel about the french so stay tuned for that i'm sure it'll be helpful here that being said guys let's get right into the first episode enjoy and uh, i really hope you guys uh find this system to be just as effective as i did when i did this series All right, we're starting at 400 here. Let's get F4 in. Just immediately claim the E5 square. We've got our nice setup here. We'll bring the knight out. We'll bring the bishop out. And we'll... Get castle. That's it. That's that's all we want to do. Is this a speed run? I never liked the word speed run, to be honest with you. You know? Speed run is kind of like getting the highest rating, you know, as fast as possible. And I never really look at these as speed runs. They're more like exhibitions. Just able to showcase an opening over and over at all the different rating levels. All right, so let's see if we can show one of the first main ideas. Let's see if this goes. Knight g4, well, we'll, we'll kick you out. We'll have to boot you out. But one nice thing is we have this terrible bishop, right? Every time we play the stone wall, we're going to have this disgusting example of a bishop on c1. So bishop d2, bishop e1, and bishop h4. And the same thing reversed is going to be a really nice maneuver that's a great way to get rid of that awful bishop right off the bat right so we can take this but we can also just chill for a moment because we have a pin but let's bring our knight in right this is that great square and boy is it tempting for them to take that knight right we almost always and i say almost always literally almost every time i am going to be taking with the f pawn and already we're winning a piece just from this plan and taking here. And boy, that piece is going to be a queen. Jackpot. Now we can develop the rest of our pieces, go for some trades. And I don't think our first game will be too painful. Let's take this. We want to just get trades in if he takes me we're gonna go rook takes f7 queen takes h5 would be a nice little uh game ending blunder probably about as bad a move as you could play why did he move the knight yeah i mean he's 415 but that doesn't stop me from saying that things were executed pretty well on our end bishop over there knight into the middle take with the f pawn it opens up your rook and this is just such a solid pawn mass. I like it a little bit better than if this pawn was on that square. Because then I have this open when I'd rather have this open. When we castle, our rook is always going to be right here. Everyone starts somewhere. Exactly. This is less about him being a 415 and 
more about the power of this opening. There was nothing he could do about it. Doesn't matter his rating. I think we should take this. Technically, this is a better move, but I think it's possible that we might win another piece here. Ooh, good move. Good move from... I was just about to say his name, and I realized it's not the easiest name to say. <laughs> oh, takes it. Okay. We're just opening the, uh, the position, and again, look at this nice... Look at this nice pawn chain. We like a pawn chain like that. Check. And right, let's go Rook here. I'm gonna let him take. And hide in the corner. There's no check here. Otherwise, I'd actually be checkmated, so that wouldn't be good. And he's got to make an escape square here. GG. Take the first win. Always nice to get off to a good start. I think this was a good little opening showcase of of what we can expect here. Now let's let's briefly discuss what we saw here. I know we're playing a 400, but pay attention to what was going on in my position. You know, first of all, we established these two pawns here. Knight wants to go to that square always. Bishop always wants to go to this square. Don't be putting it here. You know. Definitely here. It's not going to go out to b5. No. b3 for sure. Castling. Pretty much every time it's going to be kingside. And then this maneuver is quite nice. One thing that happens in the stone wall is if your opponent kind of also plays the stone wall, you get the feeling that whatever you can do, they can also do. So it can be really nice for you to take your bishop, which is one of your worst pieces, right? Look at these pawns. It's a terrible bishop. And if you can go here and here and even trade it off for the knight. Let's say I took here. Takes, takes. This is also an achievement for me. Because now there's no knight coming into e4. I have two knights. It's a closed position. I can play knight e5. It's kind of nice. But of course what I did is even better. Start with bringing your knight to that great square in the middle. On e5. You want to take with the f pawn all the time. This knight. Always develops to d2, maybe to f3, but also watches over the e4 square. So if black puts a knight in there, we can take it. All right, here we go. So I think e6 is uh, kind of flexible. We'll go d5. A lot of people are going to be playing the exchange, which is fine. I think I'll still be looking to play f5, knight f6. And as you can see, we're we're pretty much keeping the same themes. I will have to play, you know, c6, castle, knight e4, and you know, it kind of looks similar, right? I think a lot of the same ideas still apply. Let's castle, king to safety first and foremost. It's gonna be tough to play against e4, but we got c6. This bishop can then go to d6. And let's Let's stick with the Stonewall numero uno plan. Knight on e4. Here we go. Like I said, we're pretty much always going to be taking with the f-pawn. It unleashes our bishop on these squares right here, which are potential candidates for this queen right now. Queen g3 looks like a good move. I see queen g3. First couple things I'm thinking, okay, bishop d6, but already I'm spying tactics with bishop h4. And this is all because my f file is open. So there's lots of ways to play against the French exchange. But we put a knight on e4. Immediately we have a winning, uh, winning threat just because our rook is open and we took with the f pawn. The stone wall strikes again and that strong knight in the middle and it's such a strong piece but it's anchored by two pawns it's really annoying to deal with we'll take this with check we 
We can definitely take the Rook here, but I believe we can look for a potentially an even stronger move. Um, I'm definitely drawn to moving this Bishop away, maybe going after this Knight. So something like this, something like this. Those moves uh, tickle my fancy. Let's start with this. That is a check. We'll go for another check. And then we'll actually take this knight and be threatening pretty nasty bishop g4 move. Bishop g4, check again. I have a puzzle for the chat. Who can find checkmate? And I'm talking about a nice, good forced mate. There you go, you found it. Good job, guys. Good job. Nailed it! Well done. You guys didn't even have to make any, any guesses. Just... Resignation on the spot. Rook f1. It's pinned. The only move is king there. And then queen g5. Check will actually be met by rook to e3. So after rook e3, you need another move there. Right? I'm checking you here. Queen g5, great, but I got rook e3. He trusted us to find the mate. Eh, honestly, fair. Rook d1. There you go. So that's a good one. But if you ask me, after king d2, e3 is a little bit more satisfying. Rook takes e3, rook d1. King takes e3, queen g5. I believe that E3 was the correct answer. Unfortunately, the chat couldn't produce that one. However, I'll give you part marks for Queen G5. Well done, well done. But talking about this opening, first of all, I know it's gonna look a little weird. I'm really forcing this opening because I want to showcase uh, you know, how it can still work. But guess what? Knight on E4, that is, that's the plan. This pawn could be on d4. In fact, it should. Of course, our opponent uh, developed his bishop on a pretty bad square here. But knight e4, we always take with the f pawn. And I mean, the tactics just kind of wrote themselves themselves into existence here. All right. Oh, and we actually get d4. So I am going to reply with d5. Pretty much uh, immediately. And I. For me, I see if I play c6 or e6, e4 might be coming. So now I am going to play f5 immediately to clamp down on that square. <laughs> I've never seen this. He's highly offended. <laughs> All right, I'll go e6. And I am just going to go c6. So I'm actually just going to sit here in this position. Just going to establish my, uh, my pawns. Holy smokes. I've never seen this refutation before. <laughs> G4! Listen, I give you a lot of credit. I give you a lot of credit for this move, buddy. <laughs> I will take it. You can probably imagine I am preparing Queen H4 here. I mean, if the Stonewall is getting our opponent to overreact like this, then it's a win in my book, you know? <laughs> he wanted E4 so badly. He wanted to chase my F-Pawn with G4. He wasn't satisfied with anything. <laughs> it's like, okay, sure. I guess it's like that. King moves. Um, I'm thinking about maybe trying to get this bishop to h6 here, but knight to um, knight to f6 also looks nice. It goes here. I think we'll take this pawn. I wonder if. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's just going to be pawn hunting for me here. Check. 
Whoa. Aggressive. Well, I like that. I respect you, brah. What's it going to be? Queen here and maybe try to get that uh, bishop to h6. Let's bring this queen back. Wow, this is quite the opening here. He's really got no uh, no regard for the pieces. Let's give a check. That is a <laughs> a triple fork here. King slides to that square, and the first thing I'm thinking, I know I've got hanging stuff, but I'm thinking about checkmate. Is there a way I can mate him? That's all I'm looking for here. I see a few ideas. I don't know if they're forced mate or anything, but let's see a few tempting options. Remember, he's probably going to play knight here. Right? After knight here, his king can then run to this, like, this way. And I don't think I'm getting a mate there. So what I will do is I'll first play this move, knight c5. Right? Okay. King's in checkmate. He has to take me. And then I'll develop my knight to a6. I'm threatening a couple checks there. I'm hoping that that king is just not going to find shelter. It's not as obvious that you need to move this knight when there's nothing to take. You know? That's what I'm hoping, at least. Now, there's nothing to take, right? It's not obvious you need to move that knight. And there you go. We see a different move. And with this knight, we're able to waltz in and deliver that checkmate. There we go. This was great as black, right? We got control over e4 early. f3, I mean, there's only so much I can say about this move. It's never going to be a great move, right? Opening up this diagonal is already not good. But then following up with g4 is certainly quite an eccentric start to the game. So, uh, yeah. G4, I can't say much here, but... The stone wall has been effective because whatever the hell this opening is, that ain't it. That ain't it for white. All right, we're going to start with d4. See what opening we get there. And let's just immediately establish f4. Mm -hmm. let's, let's put e3 actually. Be solid there. Knight f3, c3, bishop d3. We've seen this before. This is our plan. Just get that. Oh, and that's nice for me, right? Because you know I was going to play this move anyway. So you guys know that I'm very happy to see that check. Got our pawns like this. Our bishop is going to go to d3 next. Okay, and here we go. Now we want a castle. Of course, if he takes us, we can... Free move taking back. Okay, let's just castle for now. We can definitely take this, but I'll wait and see a few moves where his pieces want to go. Castling is a move we know we want to do, so let's just do it, right? Knight h6. Honestly, a very weird move, but I got to give him a lot of credit. I think it's a good move. Let's pop our knight in here to the best stonewall square you've ever seen. All right, takes. You already know which way we're taking back. It is going to be with the F pawn. And wow, he does not trade our bishop. Instead, he moves and attacks our queen. Now, in this position, queen a4, you might think wins a piece, but c6 guards the bishop, so don't get tempted by that. When you play the stonewall... Your focus is king side, king side, king side. So I'm going queen e1 here, which is actually a typical move in the stone wall to bring the queen out to one of these squares and stay focused on that side of the board. I see f5. I see that closes down my bishop, closes down the f-file. To be honest with you, I just can't let that happen. Like, <laughs> that's not going to work for me. Got to take it. Now with my queen so nicely placed on this diagonal, I think I am going to continue with queen h4. Hitting a couple pieces here. The knight there should be, uh, should be a blunder as I pick up this bishop. 
But even just him playing f5, me taking on passant, taking back, this is already good for me. Like this, this center is not that great. He's weak on this diagonal here. Queen there. I think we have an idea what we want to do. This knight can be taken, but also queen h5 stops him from castling. So let's take this. We're up a piece now, so all we need to do is essentially trade and walk this to victory. e5. A devilish move. I want to give him this check. I also want to slide my, uh, my queen into g7. I'm going to play this instead. Check. I actually really liked his move knight h6. I was a big fan of that one. Let's just keep it simple and bring more pieces in. What I am eyeballing is a knight fork right here. So I'm looking at this and looking at this. Move that bishop, knight f5. That's what I'm thinking. Let me at him. All right, let's kind of uh, disguise our move here. Let's let's bring this bishop back. You know, nobody sees what I'm doing. Knight h4 and knight f5. Uh huh. All right, slow build up here. Knight h4. Moment of truth. It's been a, a long plan coming. He goes here. It actually works out to be a great move. I am going to proceed with this check. Uh, but it does it does stop it in view of rook takes f5. But my queen's also under attack. So it's not clear that he's just going to, going to take it. He goes king here, which I think is a great move. Rook g5, king e6. Hey, if I took his queen, he takes my queen. I don't know if I like that trade. Not so clear at all. Queen c6, yet another good move. We're gonna have to start finding brilliancies here. To take this guy out. I think what we have to remember about the stone wall is that everything you do is king side focused. You will absolutely lose the game on the queen side. Just remember that. <laughs> The queen side is for you to lose the game. The king side is where the action is. Hello, the happy hunter. What's this series about? It's about the stone wall. Which uh, we might see king here or king there. And knight takes c6, mate. Just a little bit of a cute checkmate there. And he's got his rook taking that last available square. GG. We we did just kind of outclass him on the board a little bit there. But, 95, right? This is like very typical for the opening. Here, what would be our next moves? Probably something like take, bring our queen out here, maybe develop the knight. And the nice thing about a pawn structure like this is that we have in our back pocket e4. E4 is a way to start activating the rest of our pieces. We still have this maneuver to use, but let's say Black Castle, we took, and they played like, they're trying to get their bishop back, and then we go E4. This is like a nice way to activate the rest of our pieces. The bishop would flow to G5 comfortably. The knight might sack on F6. G4, aggressive move to kick the knight out. This all strikes me as very, uh, very in line with the opening. When you see this setup and you castle, knight here and queen out, that's important, but also queen e1 and over here. Of course, you're going to have to deal with these bishops before then, but sometimes this bishop is not here. It could be over here or on b7, and in those cases where your bishop's out like that, this can be a great maneuver to maybe go threat and mate. All right, we're going to start with d4. So, 
This is a... I'm glad we got to see this move early. You might think it doesn't matter in the stone wall, but it's really important in the stone wall that you open up the E file. Because these two pawns, when you take back on E5, you'd rather not have the pawns doubled. So essentially, if I play C3, he takes, I take. It means that when I put a knight here and I take with the F pawn, first of all, I have to deal with an open C file. Second of all, my pawns are still doubled. So I absolutely want to play E3 as my first pawn move. I want to take back this way. Always. Always. Okay, we can follow up with C3. That's fine. But still, my intention is to take this way. And you can probably guess my next couple moves. One thing that I like to do, I mean, knight here is a fantastic move. But if my opponent has not developed the bishop to that diagonal yet, I like to get my bishop there just to prevent it. I think it's kind of nice. So just a preference. Just a preference. Okay, let's go knight f3, castle. And okay, anytime we see this, we'll almost always retreat the bishop this way. This is the diagonal we want to stay on. We're going to castle. And even though it's tempting to jump in there right away, sometimes we may want to wait. Okay, so here I'm going to take, see what he does. Um, he's got now the same thing as me. I'm actually going to do the same plan we did the first time. I'm going to go here, here, and here. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's a way to immediately attack this knight. Now, queen d6. I see this move, and I can already see when I get here, I'm not going to be pinning him anymore. I can also see that when I play this, if he takes, I take and I win a piece. How likely is that to happen? I don't know, but I'm about to find out. I just think peace trades are very tempting, and boy, if I see that queen there, I'm happy to stick the knight in. And it, it's not really distracting me from my plan. I'm still going to play this. But this is what the stone wall does. It's like, you leave that knight there, it's so goddamn annoying. You want to take it so bad, because, I mean, it's hitting so many things. But you can't. If you long castle, knight takes f7 is available. Yeah, if he's watched the habits, he's going to trade. Exactly. Okay, nice move. Let's continue with our plan. Great move from uh, my opponent there. Remember, I'm still taking with uh, this pawn, so it doesn't really change anything about the position. Okay, let's take this way. All right. Let's try to remove what I would say is the strongest piece in the position for him. That's what this knight usually does. If you're wondering what happens in the stone wall, this knight's future, it's like already predetermined. It wants to go to e5. We'll play queen here to stop that and maybe also hit this pawn. So that's predetermined. This knight's future is also predetermined. You usually play knight d2 and just wait to take a knight on e4. Everybody has their role. Right, let's get rid of this knight. I'm hoping he does this because it's the better move and we want good uh we want good solid moves. This would be just a little underwhelming, disappointing, because he's played a tremendous game so far. 
He's using a lot of time. They don't make 400s like they used to, I'm telling you. They really don't. We'll go queen f5. We definitely could have taken the pawn on the previous turn, but I was kind of playing in stride there. Knight takes e4 is sort of the normal move you'd want to play in a stone wall, so I went with that. But there was a hanging pawn there due to the fact it was check. Otherwise, we would be mating ourselves. We're going for a trade here. I think our pawns are still extremely effective. Our bishop is going to reach that square we've been talking about on h4. We can take a free pawn. Bishop h4. Other rook slides over to f1. And there's even another pawn hanging on h7. So I'm liking what's become of this position. Even though our bishop is so bad... Right, you look at these pawns, and I mean, you can definitely say it's not a good piece. Despite that, when it gets to h4, all of a sudden that changes a little bit. You know, we're up a clean pawn here. It's all locked up in the middle, and we want to bring our rook over. Now this is a pretty good piece. Unfortunately, he's he's kind of playing like really good moves, but he's he's way down on the clock. This is like uh, this is like me. This is some stuff I would do. So the quality of the moves is very 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 good, um, especially for his rating, right? Four hundred. I tell you, his main issue is time. I imagine. That's the reason why he's 400 and not higher. Let's go here just to get all the pawns on uh, dark squares. And there we go. We can finish the game with a nice little continuous chain, dark squares only. Get him back in there. Okay. We see d4. We're going to go d5. E6, let's go C6, and next move, F5. All right, we see C5, which is kind of nice for us. F5, we'll lay our claim to the E4 square. Remember, what goes where in this opening? This knight usually goes here and takes that knight, just playing defense. This bishop wants to go like that. This knight wants to end up there. And this bishop, for the most part, goes here. But now I see that it can't really get there, so I'm going to go here. Now I'm going to play bishop e7. I could go knight f6, but I kind of like making him take and then play knight f6, knight e4. I feel like if I play knight here, he's going to take me, which is not bad for me. But I really like getting my knight to e4. That's not a check. That's not defending that. I don't know what that move is. Just don't play that. Or that. There we go. That's a good move, I guess. That's a good move. Um, but yeah, this should just be a big advantage now. We castle. Our knight still gets to e4. Remember, after they take, it's F takes E5 every time. Or F takes E4 every time, excuse me. Road to GM3000. Thanks for the raid. Let's bring our knight in. Road to GM3000. Thanks for the raid. 273 of you. I have started a brand new account. I know the username might be confusing, but uh, the the point of the, let's call it a speed run for lack of a better word, more of an educational series. The point of this is to try to play the stone wall every single game, get you guys familiar with how to handle it. 
It's a tricky opening that gets used a lot at the lower levels pretty effectively as well. Uh, and I'm gonna try to showcase that. My username is Wonstall. I know you're probably wondering what the heck does that mean? Very confusing. Let's play this and just jump out with the bishop right away. Of course, bishop here, we could go the slow way, but I think we can play a little more aggressively here because we got the extra piece. Coacher, you gotta grab something to eat. Do I mind pausing until you return? Now here's the thing, and I mean this honestly. I would happily pause for you guys to get food, but we both know that you guys would not pause for me to get food. Whenever I get food, we lose viewers. So if it's not gonna work both ways, I cannot afford you that courtesy. I can't do it. Thanks again, uh, Road to GM 3000. Got another shout out there. That's a big raid. Welcome everyone. I uh, hope you might be in the mood to learn something this Saturday. We don't always uh, try to teach you stuff here, but you might learn something by accident, just by hanging out. But this is definitely a more educational series. I like to have a bit of fun with it, but I am genuinely trying to you know, show you a, uh, a new way to play. Okay, I think at this point we can maybe uh, go for the go for the trickery. Rook F two and Knight D three. Eh, eh, eh. Right. This is, this is how you go for style points. But if you want efficiency, you take this queen, you put it right here. That's efficiency. Canadian efficiency. Damn, he was on a 12 hour stream. Holy smokes. Well, we might be doing a 12 hour stream today. I can, uh, can definitely say that. Shaq, mate, GG. Let's have a look at this opening. He gave me a free piece here, which made things a lot easier. But what were we going to do? He's going to take, probably would develop like this, let's say, right? These are fair moves. And what I would do is probably bring this bishop here, play knight e4, and take with the f-pawn. And meanwhile, this knight would arrive to d7 to play defense on the e5 square. Now I want to show you the difference between my position and my opponent's position in terms of the e5 square. I know this might, maybe this is obvious, I don't know, but have a look. So I go here, let's say, he goes here, takes, I go 94, or rather let me take and go 94 and he takes. Now we've both put our knights on e4 and e5 and, and we've both captured them. I've taken with the F-pawn, he's taken with the D-pawn. Now that's already an imbalance, but the reason that my position is so much better than White's is because White's pawns don't connect. The pawn's not on F4. The pawn's also certainly not on D4. Then it would be very, very, very equal. The pawn's not on F4. If he ever tries to play F4, I'm going to take en passant. So this pawn is going to be stranded. And I'm going to play Queen G5, Rook F5, and I'm going to take it. And there's nothing you can do about it unless you start playing f4, at which point I'm always gonna take. And if you take with the rook, I mean, the pawn is just as weak as before. Plus these are doubled and isolated pawns now. And if you take with a pawn, well, you might lose it anyway. So even though we're both doing the exact same plan, the fact that my pawns are like this and my opponent's pawns are like that means my knight on e4 is gonna be far more effective. So anytime they trade, we take with the f pawn. And I mean, this is just, it's tough, tough for him. So let's start with d4.
And I see this move, I'm gonna play f4. All right, knight out, bishop out. I like to get this move before that move happens, if I can. Not a huge deal either way. But it looked like it was available, so went ahead and did it. Bishop there, let's go for the knight. C3, knight D2, right? Getting uh, getting used to it here. Let's castle. I'm thinking knight D2. It's nice to take control over that square. And if he takes, maybe I take back and bring the knight D5. Now, I can't play knight E5, right? We all see that. There's a couple things I can do. I can play h3. It's going to take me, maybe I take back and go knight e5. But the other thing that I can do is I could try to go queen e1. And I talked about this move earlier. This is a very legitimate move, trying to bring the queen out to h4 and getting out of the pin. So it's like a great flexible move, queen e1. And queen h4 looks like a nice follow-up. So let's go knight e5. This is just so, and you see how effective it is. We're going to take with the F pawn. Immediately we're forking pieces. Even if he took with the bishop, which was better, I take with the F pawn still. I'm opening up my rook. This bishop hits h7. My queen is ready to slide to g3 or h4. And I mean, even just taking back and forking pieces is such a common thing to have happen. All right, so now we are ahead a piece. Good start. This queen is ready to join this side of the board. Guarding that pawn and hitting that bishop looks multi-purpose. I like it. And you notice how most of the threats I'm creating in these openings, it's actually without this bishop. Like, that guy doesn't really do anything until a lot later, so. Bishop f5. I will take it. You know that I'm up for a trade because I'm on material. That's the dead giveaway. He takes there, let's take it back. Our queen is protecting. And knight f3 incoming. There we go. And now we're up two pieces, but it's been all about that e5 square. Right, that was, uh, that was the difference. Rook e6, actually an interesting move. Bring the rook over to f1. Trade that. Okay, discovered attack. Hopefully he sees it. Because if not, he's going to be losing his queen here. Oh, right. unfortunate. He saw it, but he still lost his queen. Dang. GG. Of course, you know, these guys are low rated. They're going to be blundering pieces, but that's why I like to start these uh, series so low rated because, hey, there's a lot of people this low rated in the chat. Don't pretend that there are not. I know. Don't try to fool me. All right? And these games, although they might be one-sided, they, they offer me a, a chance to speak a little bit more about the opening. Um, because the games are a little bit easier and I'm able to uh, showcase the ideas a little bit better. So it's sort of like a nice little exhibition. And even if, even if you know, of course I can beat a 300 anyway. But we get to see all the ideas that I'm using. Knight d2. I said this knight usually watches e4. The reason why I didn't play bishop d2 is maybe because this knight might pop into e4. So by preventing that move... I'm not sure what black does next. If that's not their plan, then I'm not sure what is. My plan is queen e1, get out of the pin, and knight e5. And if he didn't play this move, which is not great, it's a mistake. He's kind of in tough. You know, I might bring this queen out here, g4, g5, and start rolling a decent attack. All right, hey, d4. We're getting a lot of d4 games, aren't we? Can't complain. Okay, here, remember, if I go c6, Takes, takes, I don't want that, right? Because now the C file is open. So remember, in the stone wall, you always want to capture away, right? To open up the center. 
That's what we're looking to do. Let's get F5 in there. Clamping down on that square. C6. Knight F6. Bishop D6. And castle. Right? Let's go. Bishop D6. Castle. Bishop back. I might take that, but for the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and castle. Bishop there. Guess what move I'm going to do? Knight E4. Knight E4. I'm saying take me. I'm ready to take back with my f pawn. Okay, he does so. He retreats now. All right. It's up to us. How are we going to proceed? This is a great position already. We've got that open file for our rook. We really want this knight to get over there. But I think for the moment, I might hold off taking that because it looks like it allows his queen to come out to h5, which I don't really want to allow. Knight d7 drops my bishop for the moment. So I am thinking of moving my queen just to e7. Simple. Bishop f5 is another move, but I'm just going to go here. My bishop is now wide open. Remember, this opening started with a pawn here and here. And they've both moved like that. This is glorious for this bishop on c8. A queen on e7 this is exactly how you want it to look. Even if the pawns are like this, queen e7 is normal. Now, I think... I don't know what you guys think, but I think... He's trying to castle away from my beautiful attack. I don't like that. I'm not going to lie. I don't like that. I think that's his plan, though. Let's play bishop here. Just to annoy that plan. And he goes f3. I was hoping you'd play f3. Because now, when I take the e3 pawn is loose as well. Go ahead and take this. Check. King f1, bishop h3 is mate. King d1, the f3 pawn is still loose. It goes here. Hmm. Well, definitely looks like this is a start, right? Bishop takes bishop. What you need to think about after bishop takes bishop is not knight takes. Bishop takes, pawn takes, and, you know, a little long-range action, right? H7, not mate, but certainly a check, and, you know, probably not what you want. I can say that much. So, in this position, I can admit... First of all, the king can still uh, castle. Let's not forget that. So white white can still castle on the next turn, which is actually kind of relevant to note because I'm thinking of taking and just taking with the queen. Nice and easy. Hit the rook in the corner and go from there. So I think I'm probably going to do that. The other move I'm considering is maybe rook e8 or bishop f5. And I'm loving the look of bishop f5, I gotta say. Bishop f5, nice little in-between move. Threatens bishop d3, which is going to cause some pain. So, the more I look at it, the more I'm drawn to bishop f5. Wonder how my opponent's gonna react, but bishop d3 is almost like a, almost a pre-move. Okay. That move I don't really like because now he can't castle either way, which means this move looks pretty effective. Oh, 
All right, the position is kind of tightening up here. I'm going to continue with rook e8. Continue making the threats. If bishop takes bishop, which is free, I'm intending bishop takes e2. Now, queen takes is good. Bishop takes, this happens. And although it's still winning for me, it's not mate or anything. So I think we'll go with queen takes e2. Check, has to be taken. And guess what? Whichever side you go to, I take the other piece. And once again, with my queen side nearly entirely stationary, We've still made a ton of significant threats. Check. Oh, he found a way to lose both of the pieces. Let's go here, restrict the king, and there's maybe gonna be a checkmate coming in here. We go here. That is hanging, but also, so is checkmate. GG, Rob. Good game. Opening. This was actually a real classic stonewall position, right? We're not in any rush to take this bishop. We're happy to leave it there. You know, you want to take? Go ahead. My queen will recapture. But just sink that knight in early. It's really stressful for white to deal with. You're hitting a lot of things, and all they want to do is get rid of it, but they can't take with the knight. And giving away bishop for knight never feels great. Then we just develop the bishop. If white did whatever, we would play knight here. Maybe knight here. Rook over. And it's all about the center and the king side. That's what the stone wall is all about. Don't worry about the queen side. It barely exists. What if they sink theirs into e5? Well, we'll, we'll slowly evict it. Here, I would probably play queen e7, and then maybe knight d7. And remember, if they ever go to support their knight like that, just like you with the stone wall, take en passant. And your position will almost always be better. Let's see, we got the white pieces. We're gonna start with d4. E3, just to disguise what I'm doing. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what I'm up to. Damn, until I play that. Bishop d3 before I see this move. If this move happens, not a big deal. I'll do this anyway. But it's nice. We have our formation. Knight f3. Knight d2. I like to do a knight d2. Oh. That's... A free pawn but you know what i'm gonna leave it there we're focused on the stone wall i want to see how effective that is that pawn is just a side quest i don't need it let's castle guess what 95 is coming All right, time for knight e5. How effective this move is gonna be. Let's find out. It's so tempting to take it with the knight. So many people wanna do that. My opponent took it the safe way, but blundered a piece right after. But even if that knight went back here, it was already getting to the point where I think you could say like, it's close to me. We're gonna take, we we'll almost always take en passant. We're going to go down here, attack the rook. We're going to get rook f8 most likely. And then bishop g6. And you see how quickly that stone wall leads to checkmate here. I mean, it's, it's working wonders for us so far. Now, of course, this was very helpful. But imagine our opponent played this, right? Imagine we saw knight d7. 
At this point, I'm just, I'm all in on this attack. I'm going queen here. Let's say we see castle. I mean, I'm looking at the h6 pawn in the future. Maybe e4 takes takes and bishop h6. I'm also looking at a rook lift. But to me, e4, and if they take, you get this position. This is game over soon. The stone wall is all about the attack. All pieces aimed at the king. Pretty nice. As we know, the stone wall is a little bit harder to get with black. But we're going to try. We're, we're going to start with e6, and then d5. And then we're going to get f5 after that. Oh, he's helped. Look at this guy. He played bishop here, and then bishop here. All stone wall moves. Appreciate it, man. That is very, very kind. f5, knight f6. And I want to play bishop d6, but... I was going to say, if he castled, he had a check. After I see this, I think I can play bishop d6. I think it's safe. We're both going to castle, and guess what? My knight's going to make an appearance on you-know-what square. e4. Here I go. It is so effective. All you do is just wedge that knight in. Free move, pawn takes. And that queen move is not going to do much. There are many ways to win material here. I'm actually going to start by taking this because I'm anticipating that move. And we're going to hit him with a nasty knight f3. But that knight, also, I don't mind getting it right back where it belongs on e4. I think knight back there is good, but you know me, I'm a little bit greedy. Bishop f4. Always up to something, aren't I? But this was all off the back of knight e4. Like, it's just two pawns and then a knight. A lot of people are missing missing the boat on this uh, on this stonewall setup. Let's play f4, look to open things up. Start here. Look to get a forced checkmate. Well, if he took it, that would have been something else. Queen here, but of course, why would we go queen here when we could go rook here? Be so... You don't have to be so strong. To win with the stone wall. You don't have to be so strong. Listen to Fred again. 500 on the dot. We just hit 500 elo. Started with a brand new opening system with white and black stone wall. Boy, this feels good. I'm so proud of myself right now. Wow. Look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another Stonewall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also, click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.